Hi, my name is Sue Hill. I'm the principal here at the British School. I joined the school in August and I'm here today with Joe Prabhu, who's the head of primary, and Tom Holmes, who has been heading up the IPC this year. And the reason we're here to, to chat to you today is because we are extremely uh, pleased to say, to announce that we have been accredited by the International Primary Curriculum. Uh, we went through a, a, an in-depth one-week inspection process which was extremely thorough um, and we want to share um, our elation because if you look at some of the, the feedback we've had it really reflects well on us as a school, as a community of learners. So I'd like to, to ask some questions of my team here because having joined the school in August Things were already in motion, it wasn't something that I initiated. So I'd, I'd like to direct my first uh, question here to, to Joe Prabhu. So Joe, why IPC and why put us through this accreditation process? IPC I did in my previous school um, and I decided that when I came here, the learning was um, focused but needed to be more exciting and engaging for the children and the IPC units and the learning process at the entry points and the exit points and the way that we can share the learning with the parents is really exciting while still being rigorous and focused to, to develop the children's knowledge, skills and understanding. Um, so the teachers, we first introduced it to them and they were so excited about the units and when the teachers are excited, the children can get excited about the learning. Um, so we started on the process of seeing whether IPC would be right for our school and once we saw the engagement for the students and the, the community from, from the teachers, we decided that it was a, the right thing to do. So we brought IPC in across the primary school um, and we've seen a real kind of improvement in the, the quality of the discussions and the inquiry based learning and children asking questions and wanting to find out and learn more. Um, and we wanted to celebrate that, not just as a school, but as a, a outside of the community and get parents to be able to share that and the students. So the accreditation process has been a, a two year process. Um, with a pre-accreditation and accreditation um, and throughout that it's been a, a real journey on focusing on in improving students learning mm -hmm. um, and like you say it was a, a rigorous thorough process so that we knew when we were an accredited school that we could say that the learning that the, the children were, were doing every day and the staff that were engaged with those students was, that was high quality. I think it's important that, that everybody's on board with the IPC. Um, I've come across the IPC in, in my last school, in fact Tom, you were with me in, yeah, <laughs> in yes, BI, was, yeah. BIS in Hanoi and the Lord Anglia School. So we, we had the IPC there and, and in my previous school um, in, in Ho Chi Minh City too. I think what I've noticed here is that, that everybody is thoroughly engaged in the process. And I must admit, uh, joining the school in August and going through what could have been a really difficult time with COVID restrictions, I just sense that, that passion from our students. So when you stop, our students on entry to the school and they're dressed in some imaginative costume or outfit so it's really easy to engage and say whoa you know you you are a pirate today what, what's happening and the the passion with which our learners can explain learning because that's why we're here we're talking about learning that's the the incredible uh, focus uh, for the international primary curriculum but to hear how confidently they can describe what learning looks like and why they are dressed in, in such a, an outfit. I think um, I, I was really surprised that, that everybody had buy-in. Tom, you've been really instrumental in making sure that all of the staff are on board and in, indeed all of the, the students and then the parents as well who really shone in this accreditation. Tell, tell me the process that you've gone through there. Um, well, when I took over the role, it was about sort of having a clear focus of where we were all going and uh, using sort of the, the ethos of the IPC and the personal learning goals within the IPC to really drive everything forward and uh, making sure that our teachers, our children and our community understand those personal learning goals and obviously they're the sort of driving force behind everything we do in, in primary now and uh, enables parents to see the importance of developing those, those skills. Uh, it was important that when we were going through this accreditation process, 
that we all had a, a sort of common goal of, as, as Joan said, improving learning and getting recognition for all the wonderful things that happen in this school. So uh, you mentioned getting buy-in. That's not hard in the IPC because it's so exciting and engaging. The kids buy into it, the teachers have been amazing, and our parents have really seen the benefit. And uh, in the last sort of 12 months, we've had a number of parents in partnership ses sessions mm -hmm. where we can explain and support and discuss these things with our parent com and community. And it's really enabled them to understand why we teach the way we do mm -hmm. and why we let our children learn the way they do, which is perhaps very different to how they might have learnt in the past. You mentioned something there about personal learning goals and uh, I recall this year uh, seeing superheroes arrive at school. In fact, when I went to the front the gate, the main entrance of the school, it was uh, a, a gasp initially because I saw teachers on a very cold day dressed uh, as superheroes in all sorts of regalia. Um, and it was fun, it was enticing. Parents were coming into the entrance just to have a little peep at what our teachers were dressed as. Why superheroes? And are they going to disappear? What, what, what uh, did They're they very much, have? Very much here to stay. <laughs> so those personal learning goals, those, those skills that we want our, our children to develop, being resilient, being a communicator, being a collaborator, uh, being a thinker, being empathetic and respectful, uh, we really wanted to bring them to life. And we ran a competition with our, with our learners at school to come up with superheroes that embody those, those phrases and those words. So all the children entered and we had the very tough job of whittling it down to sort of 20 or 30. And then as a teacher team, we were looking at sort of who we think really has encapsulated the essence of those words as these superheroes. So once we had our winners selected, it was actually a collaboration with some year 12 artists who helped uh, come up with these final designs for these superheroes. And once they were ready to be launched, we thought, how better to do it than have a school full of superheroes? So on that day, children were in as their own superheroes, their favourite superheroes, the school superheroes, all these wonderful sort of embodiments of these personal learning goals. And it was amazing to see our staff and our children engaged in such a sort of purposeful event. Indeed, I, I, oh, Joe, <laughs> you're a superhero that day. If I remember rightly, you had a, a blue uh, yeah, wig, a, big, um, a cape yeah, with all those special uh, back. <laughs> so it, it, it's important for, for the children to see the staff and, and the whole community getting involved there. It's been lovely to, to listen to parents as well. And I know part of the accreditation process was um, involved interviews with parents. Uh, we weren't allowed to be in those interviews, but it's been reflected in the report that um, our parents are, are fully involved in the IPC and, and I hear from parents that the children not only see learning as something they do in school, they're actually enthralled by learning so much that they go home and they, they want to follow on, they want to look for uh, documentaries or resources or elements to fit in with, with that learning. So they, they just don't see the boundaries of learning being within four walls or even within our, our uh, campus here. Jo, do you want to add anything there? About Absolutely, and I say that came really strongly across in the report um, from, the, from the parent community. And even yesterday, having a conversation with a parent who said, oh, congratulations on, on the accreditation. I said, oh, thank you. The students love the IPC, the teachers love it. And they said back to me, the parents love it too, which is really <laughs> nice to hear. Um, but some of the comments that came across that um, parents, after having done our temples, dreams and treasures um, unit in year four, were saying, actually, as a family, we're not now going to plan a trip to Egypt because my child is so engaged and wants to find out more or I love the entry and exit points my child takes me by the hand and leads me to the learning so it's that fact of parents feel like they have a window into the classroom because the children are so engaged and excited to share what they've they've learned in school um, and further that at home whether that's going to a museum at the weekend or extra trips or more research or interviewing grandparents um, for some of the history research has been uh, really exciting. The parents really are highly engaged um, and support the, the learning journey outside of school as well. So I think we're talking a lot here about enthusiastic learners and, and cultivating curiosity and, and the inquiry-based learning is incredible. 
I think some people might question if, if we're dressing up and having so much fun, um, are they still learning as much as they would do from some of the, what you might perceive as traditional ways of learning? Um, you mentioned rigor, Joe, and I, I see Tom's nodding furiously. That, that is at the heart of, of this type of learning as well. How do you ensure rigor, Tom? I think, uh, the, the st firstly, the structure of, of our learning process enables a really clear pro uh, journey for our learners to go on. Mm -hmm. So they know that if the structure is the same, they can focus on developing new knowledge, uh, practicing new skills, or deepening their understanding. So that's really important. And when you mentioned rigor, I was, I was nodding because I think what makes the IPC so great is that children can really challenge themselves and really take their learning as far as they want to take it. It's, it's not about you know uh, a sort of closed lesson and that's the end of that. Mm -hmm. It's a topic that they can run with, that they take off into mm -hmm. sort of different areas and that allows them to be those sort of ambitious, excited, engaged learners that we want them to be. Thank you. We mentioned some terms that you might not be familiar with, uh, an entry point and an exit point. So entry into a topic could be a, a, a splash of colour, it could be a, an engagement where people are actively coming dressed in a costume, it could be um, a, a, a role play scenario. I've, I've seen children arrive with luggage on ready to take a journey on a, a, a plane to, to unknown lands. I've seen that type of, of entry and then at the end an exit point is sort of a, a, a celebration of, of learning. Um, I even virtually those those entry and exit points have just had a, an excited buzz. I, I was involved with a year five exit point and children have been asked to demonstrate their, their learning through the medium of art and it was incredible the, the questioning uh, used by the students of each other, even virtually. Um, parents must be commended here because they too were asking some fantastic questions just to explore why did you use pencil for that aspect of your art, but you used a splash of colour for that element? What, what media have you chosen to, to represent? And this was around the topic of, of people moving for different reasons, maybe for a uh, refugee status. So learning takes many forms. Memorable entry or exit points for you? Uh, I think I always remember the reaction you get from the uh, milepost two children when they're learning about these rainforests and they've created this rainforest and then they come back into the room and it's been destroyed and the trees are down the tables are over and the reaction for, for them helps you in the rest of the unit when you're trying to trying to talk about and, and learn about the vanishing rainforest and the impact that we as, as people are having on these environments that they can link back to how it made them feel to see their very small rainforest destroyed mm -hmm. and, and it makes it really real for them. Mm -hmm. that, that engagement and that sort of focus on real life events, I think it will always uh, be a memorable one for me. Mm. I think for me with the, the older learners in year six, they do a, a making the news unit um, and we started them off with taking them in, into, into a room and sharing with them that actually school was going to be changing um, they hadn't had any notice, but they were going to be getting three hours of homework an evening and they were going to be coming in on Saturdays and they were all shocked and, oh, what's going to happen? Um, and then um, after after kind of not too long, a few hours of them, um, we, we came to them and then talked about kind of ex if you hear one piece of news, do you question that? Do you explore that? Do you go further with that? Is it um, is it that you just listen to that and believe it wholeheartedly. And then we start to take talk to them about, did you not ask any questions? If you didn't believe that that was right, why didn't you explore that further? And is one source of information good enough? So to really start opening their eyes into the reliability of, of news and one source of information. Interesting, I was just thinking there about Nord Anglia as a group of schools and the Nord Anglia vision. So they're very much keen on, on global citizenship, international education. And being impactful is, is very important. We have students here who will develop into to the leaders of the future. They, they have the confidence, they have the, the ability to articulate their ideas, but actually making a difference needs that extra step. It needs you to be impactful on a global scale. 
we did really well in the, the dimension of the accreditation on, on the aspect of international uh, mindedness. Tom, do you want to, to explain what they were looking for in that aspect? Sure, I think uh, a big part of the IPC is, is understanding uh, a child's place in a sort of global community. And, and for that, at this school, we really celebrate their, their home nation, which is perhaps where they're from, or their heritage, if they have mixed parentage from a number of different countries, their host nation, which of course here is, is Poland, mm -hmm. uh, but also for those learners whose home and host nation might be Poland, mm -hmm. uh, to have that adopted country, to really give that international mm -hmm. perspective. So each class uh, during International Week developed this adopted country, which was a sort of go-to point for each of their units if they wanted to, to sort of gather a, a different perspective or learn about something from a different part of the world. And it's great that our learners talk so openly about their friends from different countries and, and what they understand about their cultures mm -hmm. and their perspectives and how proud they are of having you know, their peers and their friends from all around the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important from the youngest children that we really develop this sense of being a part of a global community that are respectful and interested in each other's cultures. And I think we, we do cherish diversity here very much. So we have a, a wide uh, number of nationalities uh, here at the British School and just a recognition of the, the fantastic uh, breadth of cultural norms and ideas and, and understandings. It, it makes for a, a fantastic place to be and to learn. Joe, do you want to add anything more on the global or international aspect? I think as well, coming back to the com community, our parents also in, in book week came in and shared um, stories from, from their home country, maybe in their mother tongue, um, which also helps celebrate and, and kind of bring that together as well for the children. Um, but when you said about the, the taking action, um, they also spoke to our student leadership groups um, who looked at maybe being a global buddy and how they could create a, they created a calendar um, of events where they wanted to share things or our eco team who have looked at maybe not using the plastic knives and forks but using metal instead and trying to encourage students to bring their metal knives and forks instead of um, using plastics and again parents supported us in that um, in one parent um, sharing their, their, their job and what they did and how they could support them in that um, so all the that's like the kind of the international students part of it, our parents plus the taking action brings that all together to, to be able to make the, the global citizens and, and be respectful and, and celebrate, not just um, say, you know, I know about that my friend has this tradition, but our children are excited to say, oh, I know about this and this is similar to what I do and that's different to what I do. And really being excited to, to share the different cultures and traditions that we have around the world. I must admit the, uh, the leadership teams in primary are, are certainly keen to, to take things forward. Uh, I'll give an example, we, we've just created a, a special garden, um, our you know, British school garden, which is located just across the road from the campus. And it's, uh, it's quite a secret, you go across the road and around a building and then you, you, the, the area opens up into this uh, lovely uh, sense of uh, a Zen zone, as it's known in the secondary school but a, a hub for learning about the environment and, and taking learning outdoors. And I know the eco team have been working with uh, Mr. Kev over in the garden. Uh, sustainability, they're, they're looking at composting, they're, they're looking at linking their science learning with uh, uh, finding out the acidity of the soil, but also just to, to raise awareness of the importance of plants for our environment and and also well-being which is crucially important so they've they've definitely been directing us along the, the right channels and and they don't let it lie they don't just mention it once so <laughs> they carry on until we we really listen which is is extremely important i you can tell that we are, are very excited about the international primary curriculum and i think for us as a school uh, going into next year we're looking to take all of the good things that we have learned as a community into our key stage three, so into year seven. And then of course to link it with the International Baccalaureate, um, which is for our, our year 12 and 13 students. So it's, it's an ongoing campaign, but I think uh, we, we're quite rightly proud of, of receiving such positive feedback 
uh, from a team of inspectors that was so thorough that it made a, a, a week of uh, quite demanding <laughs> uh, interviews, observations and, and feedback. So I want to just say um, we, we are sitting here as proud practitioners and professionals, um, but we, we firmly have a belief that this is uh, so uh, ingrained now within our school that uh, it can only get even better. As they say, making, making excellence a habit is, is part of our habit now. Um, anything finally that you'd like to add um, about our accomplishment? I think it's just a, a credit to, to everyone at the school. Uh, many people might have thought that this year had enough challenges, but in fact it gave us a really wonderful focus to, to keep pushing, to keep improving and to, to see the enjoyment in our, in our children as they learn in these incredible ways and to not sort of sit back and, and have a placeholder but to really keep driving forward and I think everyone needs the recognition, all those wonderful teachers, our parents and, and uh, everyone in the school who's made that possible. Absolutely, and you, you mentioned the international mindedness. I think for me, the one thing that really stood out when we received the report was um, that the inspectors uh, kind of celebrated the fact one of the, the best things that they saw in the school was our clear focus on improving learning. And for us, that's what we do every single day. And it was really great to see that they could see that that was our real focus of always ensuring that the children are improving both their academics, but also their personal development. Mm -hmm. It's been a pleasure talking about the International Primary Curriculum today and thank you for listening.